What's up everybody and welcome to part four of my basics of deep learning series and in the previous video we left off at the point where we wanted to create this function and the question was how do we determine this list of lists with those two lists of lists and that's what we're going to do now and therefore let's also depict the hidden layer inputs so the values that will go into these nodes this way it will be easier for us to understand what's actually going on in this function. So now let's say that you want to determine the input of this node. Therefore you have to calculate the weighted sum of the input values for the first example with the weights that go to that node. So the weighted sum of this list and that list. And this weighted sum you then put into the activation function to get the output of this node. And then to uh, determine the input of this node, you have to use these input values of the first example again, but this time you use those weights. So you're calculating the weighted sum of this list with that list. Then again, to determine the output of this node, you simply put this weighted sum into our step function. And then we are done with the first example and we can go to the second. Then we simply repeat those two steps. And then obviously we go to the third and again repeat those two steps. So basically what we want to do in this function is to loop over all our examples. And then for each example, we want to loop over all the weights. And then we simply want to calculate the weighted sum for those respective uh, lists, uh, sublists. And then we put the weighted sum into our step function to get these outputs. So in the code, what we're going to do is first we're going to create this overall list that is going to contain all the outputs. So we're going to say layer outputs equals an empty list. This is then going to be the output of this function. And then we loop over all the examples. So we say for inputs in list of inputs. And then for each example, we want to create such a sublist that is going to contain the hidden layer outputs. So we are again creating an empty list and we're going to call it outputs, uh, node outputs. And then we simply loop over all the weights. So we're going to say for weight in list of weights. And then for each respective uh, combination of those sublists, we simply want to determine the node input and then the node output. So we're going to say node input equals weighted sum of the inputs and the weights. So those inputs and those weights. <coughs> and then we're going to say node output equals step function of the node input. And once we have determined that, we then append that to that sublist. So we're going to say node outputs, append node output. And then once we are done with this for loop, we can then append this sublist to this overall list. So we're going to say layer outputs append node outputs and that's already our function so now let's see if that works so we're gonna say hidden layer outputs equals determine layer outputs of the inputs oops of the inputs so these inputs here and then obviously weight major or uh, the weights one and then let's also print that so hidden layer outputs so let's run this and now since those sublists are next to each other and not beneath each other let's pretty print these hidden layer outputs and we're going to set the width to 10. and now you can see that we get the same result as we had in this diagram. So our function uh, is working. 
And now I would like to make a small addition to this function. And this is just for the purpose of being able to see what those hidden layer inputs actually look like. And therefore I'm going to create another parameter and this is going to be called activation function. And we're going to set it to true. And then right before we determine the node output, we're going to say if activation function. So if that's true, then we simply determine that node output as before with our step function. And otherwise we simply say node output equals the node input. So we are not using our step function. So now uh, let's look at what these uh, hidden layer inputs look like. So we're going to say hidden layer inputs equals determine layer outputs of the inputs and weights one. And then we're going to set the activation function to false. And then it's also pretty print these hidden layer inputs. And then we're also going to simply print an empty line. Oops, empty line. So now let's run this. And as you can see, we get the same uh, values as in our diagram. So the function is working. So now let's use it to determine the output for the whole neural net. And therefore, we can basically just uh, copy these lines. And then here, obviously, we say output and here as well, output. And then we want to uh, print these. And here we're going to set the pattern width, uh, the width to 20 and here as well. And now to actually determine these uh, output layer inputs and outputs, we have to use obviously the hidden layer uh, outputs for the inputs parameter. So here we're going to say hidden layer outputs, and then we use these weights. So weights two. So let's copy that also for this other line. And now let's run this. And now, as you can see, uh, only those values here are equal to two or bigger than two. And accordingly, then we have only ones uh, in this list of lists. So the neural net predicts the first flower to be an iris setosa, the second one iris rosicala, and the last an iris virginica. And now to see what those flowers actually are, I'm going to write df.log and then 151, 51, and 101, because uh, the values of those flowers are the values that I used for these, for this inputs uh, variable. And now, as you can see, our neural net predicted all of those flowers correctly. So now we have basically uh, answered this first question of how it makes a decision. And we could start to tackle the second question, namely how did we actually determine the right values uh, for these weights. But before we do that, I would like to point out um, a problem with our determine layer outputs function. Namely, as you can see here, we have two for loops. And in fact, this weighted sum here, this contains another for loop. So in total, there are three for loops in our determine layer outputs functions uh, function. And the total number of iterations that we have to do to determine uh, the outputs of one layer is the number of examples that we have times the number of nodes that we have times the number of features that we have. And this means obviously that the number of total iterations grows extremely fast. And for an interpreted and dynamically typed language like Python, this is a big problem in terms of speed. Because for each variable in an iteration of a for loop, uh, 
uh, Python has to make a certain number of checks. And this uh, creates a little overhead every time you have to do that. So the bigger the number of total iterations will be, or in other words, the more examples we have, or the more nodes there are on the layer, or the more features our data set we have, the more apparent the slowness of Python will become. And to show that, that that is really the case, here I have prepared a graph that shows uh, the average runtime of our determine layer outputs function for different sizes of lists of lists. So this first list here contains of 10 sublists with 10, on each sublist then contains 10 elements. So it's a list with 10 rows and 10 columns. And this last uh, list of lists here has 400 rows and 400 columns. And what I did here was simply I uh, randomly created those lists of lists. And this list of lists I then put into our determine layer outputs function for both parameters. And then I simply used the Jupyter Notebook line magic, time it, to get the average runtime of this function. And now, um, as you can see, the average runtime grows exponentially as the list of lists get bigger. And for this last list, for example, the function already needs more than three and a half seconds to run. And in the context of deep learning, a 400 by 400 list of lists is not really that big because there we could be dealing with millions or even billions of examples. So in that case, the function would probably then run uh, hours, days, weeks, or even months. Uh, and remember also that this function only determines the outputs of one layer. And obviously our neural net consists of many layers. And on top of that, even uh, as we will see in later videos, to determine the right weights for the neural net, we have to run the feed forward algorithm many, many times. So clearly this determine layer outputs function is not going to be a practical approach for implementing the feed forward algorithm. So now how do we solve this speed problem? Well, therefore, if we look back at our neuron, and especially I want you to look at this first part here, where we uh, multiply the input values with the weights and sum them up. This uh, functionality is not something that is only done by our artificial neural net. And it's basically just, like I said before, it's just a weighted sum. And as it turns out, the way that this weighted sum is defined is exactly how the dot product is defined. And the dot product is the product of two vectors. So if those vectors now contain our x, our x's and our w's, then the way you would calculate the star product is like this. So this is the same expression as this one. So the weighted sum and the dot product, they are equivalent. So and the reason why that is important is because the dot product is a fundamental operation of linear algebra. And linear algebra is a branch of mathematics that is used in many different areas besides just deep learning. For example, it's used in computer graphics, uh, cryptography, ranking websites, and also uh, analysis of social networks and many more. And so accordingly, people have developed uh, highly optimized libraries that can run uh, linear algebra operations as fast as possible and also as accurate as possible. One, for example, is called BLAS, which means basic linear algebra subprograms. And another one that builds on that is called LEPEC, which means linear algebra package. So those are going to give us some speed improvements. And on top of that, those libraries were built in low level languages like C and Fortran. And in general, low, langu uh, low level languages are generally much, much faster than high level languages like Python. So this is a second source of speed improvement. And then a third source of speed improvement comes from something called SIMD. And this stands for uh, singular instruction, multiple data. And this simply takes 
uh, advantage of the fact of how uh, CPUs are, how modern CPUs are built, and they then allow you to do operations in parallel. So for example, let's say you want to create a new list by multiplying elements of two lists. So you want to have a third list where this first element is this value times this value, second element is this value times that value, and the third element is this value times this value. And the way that you could implement that in Python could look like this. So you're basically just again looping over all the examples and then we multiply the respective elements and append that then to our list. And the way that you could implement that in the context of SIMD is that instead of multiplying those values individually, you can simply just say, okay, multiply list one with list two. And this will get you the same result. So we are giving the computer just a single instruction, but since those variables contain multiple data points, you can do those uh, operations in parallel. And this will obviously give us some speed improvements. And expressing the code in this way is something called vectorization, because you're expressing such a for loop logic with such vectors. A vector in this case simply means a list of numbers. And now, so uh, those are three things that are going to allow us to improve the speed of, of, of our uh, code. And a Python library that takes advantage of all three things is called NumPy. So now to take advantage of NumPy, we have to vectorize our code. And this will be the topic of the upcoming video. So thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video.